Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to a new week of uh, classes. Right, uh, so before we begin today's class, let's just uh, briefly look at what we did last week. Right, last week we looked, we for our study, we divided the book of Acts into three sections. The first section we talked about uh, the church in Jerusalem and what happened when there is an outpouring. Then the second session, we looked at uh, how that revival fire spread from Jerusalem to other parts uh, of, uh, you know, Asia Minor and into Europe. We saw that the gospel uh, was given to the Gentiles as well. And uh, God did great wonders and miracles through uh, the lives of the uh, disciples there. And then we also, in the third section, we briefly looked at Apostle Paul, who is a carrier of a revival. And there is so much that we can learn from uh, Apostle Paul. We look at uh, a few things, right? Uh, how the Lord, how he encountered the Lord, and then how he, there was a short visit to Jerusalem. And then Apostle Paul went back to Tarsus, where his silent years, where he spent over about 10 to 12 years in uh, Tarsus, uh, which is called the uh, silent years. Right. So let us pick up from Paul's first missionary journey. So what we'll do is we'll do first, second and third missionary journey. And the reason we are studying this is because we want to, uh, you know, Paul carried that revival and uh, wherever he went, uh, there was a move of God, an outpouring of God. And so we just want to learn from uh, the great apostle Paul. So if you're tracking along on your notes, I'm on page 12, starting on page 13. Okay, let's begin. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to stop me, ask questions. You can also put it up on the chat and uh, we'll try our best to answer those questions. Uh, okay, so... Let's look at Paul's first missionary journey. Now, the New Testament, especially the book of Acts, records two Antiochs. One is the Antioch in Syria. One is the Antioch in Pisidia, right? So uh, Paul or, or you know, uh, Barnabas was sent to Antioch of Syria. So most of, you know, it was also called Paul's home church, uh, the Antioch of Syria. Now, let's just look at what what is, you know, uh, famous in this place, Antioch of Syria? Why is it that, you know, uh, from Jerusalem, why did they choose Antioch of Syria? And how did that become a headquarters for Paul and Barnabas? Right? Now, let's look at it. Antioch of Syria is about 300 miles north of Jerusalem. And it had about 500,000 people living there. Now, it was a big city, right? Uh, very uh, close to the likes of Rome, and, uh, you know, Greece, Alexandria, uh, it was a very well-developed, uh, you know, uh, city with had uh, uh, lighted marble streets and uh, uh, buildings and waterfalls. They also had the Olympic Stadium, uh, which hosted the Olympics as well. So, uh, so this place was a developed place, unlike the other cities that we see. And, and it had theaters, private theaters, uh, expensive uh, homes, and all these things. And, and so Antioch of Syria had people of Jewish origin, Greeks, Romans, uh, Arabic, and Persian influence. Now, they, all these people from different places, they came to reside in Antioch of Syria because uh, it was a place of business. It's a developed place. And so, obviously, for business sake, to have a better lifestyle, people came from other countries and other states uh, into Antioch of Syria. So, this is the background, right? It's a cosmopolitan crowd. It's it's a uh, highly populated place, and it's got it's a rich city, uh, and that was the church. There was the church of Antioch. Now, even if you uh, look at the you know, the leadership team in Antioch of Syria is, is very interesting. Uh, Acts 13.1 records that, right? Five men were named as teachers and prophets. 
Barnabas, who is a Jew, Simeon called Nigger, Lucius, Manian, and Saul. So these five people, all five of them were from diverse cultures, diverse uh, you know, uh, backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds. And so the, the leadership team itself was a diverse crowd. Now, if you compare this to Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem had only Jews and they knew their leaders. Peter, James and John was there. Uh, later on, James took on the whole responsibility of the, uh, of, uh, you know, the church in Jerusalem. So they were all Jews. But as the revival fire spread, Gentiles began to accept the Lord. We see here that in Antioch of Syria, the, the church itself was a cosmopolitan crowd and uh, the leadership team also was, uh, you know, a, a mixed crowd. And so, uh, so we'll start from here, right? Let this be in the backdrop. Now, uh, the picture of Antioch is this. You've got... Uh, a place which is thriving with business, doing well, commercially successful city. And then there's a church planted there. The work of the Holy Spirit begins from there as well. So let's go to Paul's first missionary journey, right? So in Paul's first missionary journey, it lasted for two years, right? He traveled about 1,200 miles. Uh, so we know the uh, story, right? So uh, the church in Antioch is growing, Antioch of Syria, and Peter says, okay, Barnabas, you go and, you know, look after the church there because they need some help. And so Barnabas goes there, the church is growing. So he says, Barnabas says, I need some help. And then he remembers, okay, there was this man named Saul of Tarsus. Remember meeting him about, uh, you know, 10 odd years ago. Let me go search for him. So Saul of Tarsus, sorry, Barnabas goes in search of Saul in Tarsus and brings him to Antioch, right? And then they minister there for some time. And out of there, they start their first missionary journey, right? So who are the three people? Paul. Barnabas and Barnabas's nephew named John Mark. Now these three form the team and they begin their first missionary journey. So from Antioch, they travel up to Seleucia, which is like a seaport. And then uh, they went into Cyprus. Cyprus is another place which is Barnabas's hometown. Later we will hear in the book of Acts every now and then about Cyprus, right? And then from Cyprus, they traveled to another place, 140 miles southwest to Paphos. Uh, and here was where Paul, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Charles, we're on page 14 on the notes. Uh, so here at Paphos was uh, where Paul was empowered by the spirit to, uh, you know, he struck the Jewish sorcerer uh, with blindness. If we read that uh, in Acts 13 uh, onwards, you see that. Then from Paphos, they sailed to another place called Perga. And it is here at Perga that John Mark said, okay, I want to get back home. Uh, maybe he felt uh, the pinch of, you know, um, of traveling, or maybe he was sick. The Bible does not record why he says it, uh, but John Mark says, okay, uh, I'm done. I want to go back. And so he leaves, John Mark leaves and goes back home to Jerusalem. And so now the team has become two, that is Paul and Barnabas, right? So Paul and Barnabas, uh, they go into Antioch of Pisidia. Remember, we mentioned there are two Antiochs. So this is another Antioch of Pisidia. And uh, here again, many people uh, believe the gospel, but the Jews did not believe. Right? I mean, they wanted to cause up trouble. Uh, they persecuted Paul and Barnabas and they expelled them out of the city. So their stay in Antioch of Pisidia was a, a very brief stay. And from there, they went to Iconium. Now, this is uh, interesting in Iconium because uh, these, are, these form the Galatian churches. We'll talk about that. Uh, Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas traveled to Iconium. And here, Acts 14 and verse 3. 
Uh, can one of us please read that? Acts 14 and verse 3. Acts 14 and verse 3. Acts 14 verse 3 says, Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avdi. So we see here that they stayed in Iconium, speaking boldly in the Lord and bearing witness of his grace. And many signs and wonders began to happen, right? Uh, and then from Iconium, they moved 18 miles into Lystra. And in Lystra, if we have read the book of Acts, we see that crippled man from birth uh, where, uh, you know, uh, Paul just brings healing upon him. And then they said, hey, the gods have come down, uh, uh, you know, Paul to Paul and Barnabas says, uh, you know, they gave them names, Zeus and Hermes said, the gods have come down uh, and healed this uh, uh, lame man. Uh, then from there, uh, the Jews started causing trouble again in uh, this place. And, they, and and from Lystra, they almost, you know, remember that Paul got stoned and he, they dragged him out of the city and they thought he was dead. But he just got up and uh, went on on his journey. Then from Lystra, they traveled to Derby, which is about 20 miles again. And, and during this time, uh, is when Paul, uh, you know, he writes, you know, I went through a lot of sickness uh, later on in his epistles uh, to even to Timothy. He writes, I, when I was sick, uh, you know, nobody was around. So uh, he's talking mostly about this time in, in Galatia. Uh, and so the Galatian churches. Now, when Paul is, if we read the letter of Galatians, now we must understand that it's not one church, right? So it is approximately about five churches so let's name them first one is iconium then lystra then derby and the antioch of Pisidia, right and ferga right so uh, some of them also say paphos is included in galatia so it's definitely about uh, four to five churches uh, so when paul is writing to the galatians they are not just one church, but uh, there are uh, different groups of churches. Uh, and so uh, from here, from Derby, they journeyed back. So all the places that they visited or, you know, uh, planted churches, they went back strengthening the local churches, right? Uh, now, it's interesting to see that, you know, in most places, Paul was not spending a lot of time there. Right. Iconium was the only place where he spent quite some time. Uh, but we see that wherever he went, there were signs, miracles, wonders. The society was impacted. There was a local church planted and leaders were raised up to look after the local church. Right. So if you see, he visited all these places. And as he finished his first missionary journey, he's coming back to strengthen the local churches which means the local churches have already started and the leaders have already been raised and God is already doing a work in these places, right? And so Paul and his team ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. They preached the gospel. They ministered and many signs, miracles happened. They ministered to the Jews they ministered to the Gentiles. They ministered to people in government, to the rich people, to the poor, to every section of society. Apostle Paul and Barnabas were able to minister to them. How? Right? How? I mean, when you think of it, you know, they are rich people, or uh, you know, there are people in government places and leadership places. Uh, how is it that they were able to minister to them? by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, now, they raised up local churches, they raised up communities of believers, appointed elders, and encouraged them 
to press on to the Lord. Now, one thing that we should remember is we know that Apostle Paul, uh, he went through his silent years of waiting. So Apostle Paul was not a young man of, you know, in his early 20s or uh, early 30s. No, he was probably about uh, 48 to 50 years old when he started his first missionary journey, right? Uh, what can we learn? You know, when God puts uh, a, a spark of revival inside us, um, God may make us wait. But at the right time, God will send a Barnabas into our lives to launch out. If you go, as we study the second missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas had a, you know, a misunderstanding and they part ways. And after that, we don't hear much about Barnabas. It is only Apostle Paul. So it looked like as if God used Barnabas just to bring Saul out of this place of obscurity into the place of visibility. And that fire, that revival fire inside him just began to become an outpouring. Right. So this first missionary journey lasted two years. Right. So when they went to Galatia uh, and they went into these places, planted churches. And on the way back, he visited those churches, strengthened them in the Lord. And he came back to Jer Antioch of uh, Syria. That is his home church. Right. And in Antioch, they stayed there for three years. They completed their first missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas stayed there for three years. Now, what happens after that? Continue to read Acts 15 is the council, uh, the Jerusalem council. What is the main problem that's happening here? Now, uh, in the Jerusalem council, Paul, uh, you know, before that, in his first missionary journey, he, he led a young man named Titus into the Lord. He nurtured him and Titus later on uh, writes his own letter as well. Uh, and he nurtures this young man to become a leader. And so he he brings Titus also to Jerusalem, uh, Titus, uh, sorry, to Antioch. Uh, so Titus served with Paul in his home church, Antioch. And so Paul took Titus to Jerusalem where the, you know, the council is happening. What is the main problem uh, in in uh, for this you know for this council? What is the main thing? Should the Gentiles that have uh, you know uh, that have been saved through the grace of Jesus Christ should they be circumcised or not? Right now, reports had already come. Hey, Paul and Barnabas they went into uh, these Gentile cities and nations. They went in. They've already seen the work of God. They've already started churches. The churches are also growing. Uh, and so the whole, uh, the council of Jerusalem said, it seems right to the Lord that those Gentiles who have accepted the Lord Jesus do not have to take circumcision. So the Gentile believers also rejoiced uh, in what God is doing. So, so what do we learn from this first missionary journey? Paul was so, you know, meticulous. He planned out, you know, that, that revival that was inside him. He planned it out. But it was not something that he did arbitrarily. He knew, okay, I'll go here. We go to these places. And there was a move of God, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The communities were impacted. Churches were started. Leaders were raised. So even as we get into the second missionary journey, right, we see the same kind of, you know, pattern that Paul is following, right? Uh, actually, in the first missionary journey, there was only that one instant where they tried to stone him and he almost died and, you know, they thought he's dead and they walked away. Uh, but the second missionary journey, uh, you know, there was not much of persecution, but in the second missionary journey, uh, we see quite a lot of, you know, Paul's life being persecuted. He goes through quite a lot of troubles and difficulties. But let's look at what we can learn uh, and the, the, the places that the great apostle Paul went on his second missionary journey. So they finished their first missionary journey in two years. 
they came to the home church in Antioch and there they've been serving they've been serving there for three years and Ty Paul has brought Titus a young man Paul takes Titus goes to Jerusalem the council uh, happens they agree that Gentiles don't have to you know uh, take circumcision now from here Paul starts off his second missionary journey right so all second missionary journey lasted for about three years right unlike the first missionary journey here in in this journey he visits some of the most important places uh these you know historians and bible scholars say that this is the most important missionary journey or the most important outpouring that we can study about uh, because paul goes into hostile environments preaching the gospel right so he goes into asia minor he goes into europe uh, plants plenty of churches some of the church places he went was philippi thessalonica corinth uh, ephesus athens in greece uh, and also during the second missionary journey, he writes a letter to the, uh, the Thessalonians, two letters to Thessalonians. Uh, so let's look at the second missionary journey. Any questions? Uh, and if you have any questions. Okay. So shall we carry on? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So the second missionary journey uh started off rather bad right uh paul says okay barnabas you ready part two part one is over we've planted churches uh so part two what we'll do is probably they're sitting and discussing the second journey we'll we'll go visit the churches in galatia we'll see how they're doing right uh we'll strengthen them we'll encourage them and then we'll go into new places to uh do the ministry and maybe during the discussion, Barnabas would have said, okay, let's take John Mark with us. And Paul says, no, the last time we took John Mark, he abandoned us uh, at, at Perga. And uh, he said he wanted to go back. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, go with, if John Mark is going, I'm not going, right? Uh, now, uh, we see that it, it, it out of a, such a small, you know, uh, uh, disagreement, Paul and Barnabas parted ways, right? Uh, of course, later on, Paul writes to the Corinthians. He says, uh, you know, in Corinthians, First Corinthians nine six, he says that, you know, or only is it Barnabas and I who have the right from working? Then later on in his last letter, he says, bring John Mark to me because he is helpful to me in the ministry. So later on, we see that everything is well, right? It's not like. Uh, Paul, Barnabas, and uh, John Mark were not in talking terms. No, everything went well, but it was just that disagreement during that time. And so what happens? Barnabas takes uh, John Mark and he goes his way. Uh, and Paul, uh, uh, Paul chooses Silas, who Silas is again from, uh, 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 he was a leader in the church in Antioch. So Paul chooses Silas, and then they travel from Antioch. Uh, they go into Syria and S Cilicia. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 41. Can one of us please read that? Acts 15 and 41. One of us please read that. Acts 15 verses 41 and he went through syria and cilicia strengthening the churches right it's interesting right he went through syria and cilicia strengthening the churches so paul in his first missionary journey uh now we must understand this uh there could be many churches which paul has planted but he's not written letters to right now we may think, okay, Paul started all these churches, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and uh, in Philip, all these churches. Yes, but there are plenty of churches he would have started, but he's not written letters to. And so we see here, Syria and C Cilicia. I mean, we, we don't know about it, but it says there that 
he went from Antioch to Syria and Sicilia, confirming the churches. So the churches have already been planted there, right? So from Syria and Sicilia, Paul came to Derby and Lystra. Again, they were strengthening the same churches which they had started off in the first missionary journey. And Timothy, a young man, joins Paul's team. Right. We've heard about Timothy. Timothy must be a young boy, maybe about 17 years of age. His father was Greek. His mother was Jewish. Uh, Paul had Timothy circumcised so that Timothy could also minister to the Jews. So now the team has become three people, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Right. So Paul, in his old age, full of the Holy Spirit, young leader named Titus, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Silas, and a young man named Timothy. So these three go on. Uh, from Lystra, they go to Fergia, uh, and they come into Galatia. They strengthen the churches there. Then the, the Macedonian call, as they say, uh, uh, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 19. Could one of us please read that? Acts chapter 16, verse 19. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. Okay, is this Acts 16, 8? Sorry, I read Acts 16, 19. Yeah, Acts 16, 8. 8, 8, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. Yeah, so from Mysia, they went to Troas. Now, uh, from there, uh, from Troas, 200 miles uh, from Galatia, there, Paul was, you know, uh, probably in his prayer time. He gets the Macedonian call. Come over here. There's a work. There's a fruit uh, that is waiting to thrive here. And so uh, now the team has become four people, right? Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. Luke joins them in a place called Travos. Now, I know some of us may be thinking, oh, man, you know, there's so much, so many people come, so many people going, so many places. Uh, so more than the places, more than the people, of course, those are also important to learn. Uh, what we're trying to focus on is how Paul, you know, went about in his ministry, right? And how he was able to impact uh, you know, cities and societies. So don't be, uh, you know, overwhelmed as the class is going on. Oh, how am I going to, uh, you know, remember all of this? Uh, it's all right. Uh, it's not something that we can remember in our first reading and first study self. Uh, uh, but, uh, but it's important to learn this and understand. So don't be, uh, you know, overwhelmed. oh, how am I going to remember this? And right. Uh, it's about learning what Paul did. He as a carrier of revival, right? So, yeah. So let's go from there. From uh, from there, from Macedonia, which is a Roman colony, uh, near Paul, he traveled to Philippi. Now, we all know Paul wrote a letter to the Philippians. And, and Philippi was... Uh, uh, you know, cross section of society. Lydia, a wealthy uh, businesswoman, uh, accepted the Lord. The jailer uh, uh, also accepted the Lord. And there was a good ministry done in Philippi. A church was planted. And L so, what happened was the church was started here. Luke stayed on in Philippi. And Paul, Silas, and Timothy went into their next, you know, further on. From Philippi, they traveled into uh, two other places and came to Thessalonica. Now, again, we know that sure, Paul did a wonderful work in Thessalonica. He preached uh, the gospel in power. And here is where uh, Paul supported himself and his team uh, by working, 
uh, as a i'm sure in many other places also he would have you know worked as a tent maker but he mentions it uh, here and uh, and so in Thessalonica again the church started uh, from there uh, they went into this place called Berea now in Berea uh, we know that in book of acts mentioned that that they were very noble people highly intellectual people right so the Bereans went back opened the scriptures and they said okay whatever this person apostle paul is preaching is it true and so they went back to the scripture and they reasoned through the scripture and many people uh, accepted the teaching so silas and timothy remained in berea and paul headed off to corinth now he is alone again right there were four now he's back alone right so then where does he go he goes to one of the most important places in the second missionary journey he goes to athens from beria into athens which is about 250 miles uh, uh, by sea now now we need to picture this right it's easy to read all of this and say okay 100 miles 200 miles uh, 150 miles and all of that Picture this. It was not like we could buy a flight ticket and just you know, go and or, or there's trains or no. It it was it was hard work. There was mostly by sea or by road, and it, it was a challenge, right? It was. It's not like obviously it's not like how it is now, uh, but through along all of this, remember that Paul is an old man. He's already been afflicted in his body, but nothing stops him. We don't see Paul saying, okay, let me stay here for a couple of days, just relax. Anyway, I've done, you know, we planted about uh, maybe seven, eight churches. Let's just relax. Uh, let's just go about strengthening these churches. Let's just be happy. No, there's no account of that, right? You, you see, he's just moving from one place to another. Right, that he he he's not staying in one place. Okay, we we've got leaders, we've got the churches, we've got people leaders. Let's move on, right? So we see that you know when we are, you know, in you know the Holy Spirit is put a fire inside us. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us, right? Uh, so there are times when the Holy Spirit will, you know empower us sometimes we think okay maybe you know i'm doing this uh, i'm working so i'm not able to do this yes of course work and all of that is there or sometimes we may put limits on ourselves i believe apostle paul had many limits that he could have put on himself but we don't see that he didn't say okay you know i was beaten last time and so now i'm not able to walk uh, or let me rest for some time the journey was too much no we don't see that Right? So it's such an important learning that, you know, when God puts that fire of the Holy Spirit inside us, uh, you know, nothing can contain us. We are always waiting and wanting to spread the gospel, to make that uh, revival spark, that outpouring to spread. And we see that in Paul's life. He goes into Athens now. This is the most difficult place, I believe, that the Apostle Paul, you know, ministered in. But he does an amazing, amazing work, an outpouring of God. Uh, God confirms his ministry through signs, wonders, and miracles. So let's just look at a background of Athens. Now, we looked at the background of Antioch of Syria which is his home church. But it's important to also look at the background of this place, Athens, right? Uh, why? Because the same things that are happening in Athens are also happening now. Maybe wherever we are, same kind of thing, same sense. The enemy is doing the same old thing, right? Just in newer ways, newer patterns, but it's the same gimmick. But Paul in the power of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God, he was able to penetrate these societies, plant churches, and raise up strong believers 
in these kind of places. So let's look at some interesting facts about Athens. Now, Athens was named after a Greek goddess called Athena. We know that uh, uh, it was the home for some of the greatest philosophers. Athens was the uh, you know, intellectual capital of the world. Socrates, uh, uh, Plato, uh, Aristotle, they all came out of uh, you know, uh, Athens. And there, was a, uh, there are academies. Uh, Plato started his own academy uh, in Athens where they would basically sit and study the word of God, or sorry, not the word of God. They would study and philosophies and ideologies and uh, religion and all kinds of things, right? Now, the Athens had two dominating philosophies, right? One is called Epicurean, and we see it later on, right? Where it says the Epicureans in the book of Acts, it says the Epicureans believed, but the Stoics did not believe in Paul's message. So those two, you may come across them in the book of Acts. So Epicurean and Stoicism. Now, what is their beliefs? The Epicurean's teaching was that um, uh, uh, everything happened by chance. The world was formed by chance. People came by chance. And that is the end of all. Uh, that, you know, God was in another uh, galaxy or something and was remote and he did not care about the world uh, and and then the stoics believed that uh, everything was god and god was like a fire so once we die we will go and join that fire right so so in athens these are the two dominating beliefs right epicurean and stoics now Paul uh, arrives on in Athens. After he comes here, you, you know, the, the city of Athens is full of goddesses, idolatry, uh, is sexual immorality was on the rise there, right? Uh, some of the Greek philosophers would say that uh, it's easier to find an idol in Athens than a person. Every street, every place, there were idols, right? Uh, and uh, it is here that Paul engaged with the people. Now, Paul did something interesting. He's alone in Athens. He says, he sent message to Silas and Timothy. And he says, your guys are in, uh, Silas and Timothy are in Berea. He says, okay, Silas, Timothy, raise up some leaders. Come to Athens because there's a good work that can start here. Right? Something very important that we should learn, you know. It's always good to work as a team. Paul could have done the ministry alone. Right? He could have you know, just preached and done the whole thing alone, started the church alone. But he always worked as a team. Right? He, he calls for Timothy and uh, Silas. He said, okay, the work is looks like the ground is fruitful here. Come. And, and in the meanwhile, what did Paul do? He began to engage with the people in the city. He reasoned with the people in the synagogue and with the Gentile worshippers in marketplaces. Now, um, there's a place in Athens, uh, and you'll come across that also as you read in many of his letters. There's a place called Agora, which is like a, a, a the center of Athens, where they would. It was like a stadium kind of a place, and people would sell, you know. Business would happen there, trade would happen there, uh, idols were being sold and all of that. And this was a place to also discuss uh, religious matters, political matters. Uh, and if there's any you know, committees or political programs, it would all happen in this agora. And Paul goes into this large open space called the agora. And what does he do? He does something really interesting. Right. Uh, th what happened was they probably they you know, we got to picture this, you know, people all around doing their business and, you know, uh, maybe some meetings and all happening in that Agora. But Paul goes there and he uses their own, you know, uh, God as the message of what they believed him. And he 
and he brings context to their belief. He goes on to, in, in that great sermon called uh, in Acts chapter 17, the Mars Hill, the Sermon on Mars Hill. Uh, he addressed their ignorance. He says, I see that you all are religious. You have idols everywhere. And even on some of the idols, it's written to an unknown God. Now, here's what I'm going to do. What you have not known till now because of ignorance, I will make known to you. And, and he goes about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it, when we read it, we may think, okay, so what, what's so great about it? Picture this. These are all people who are highly religious, given into idolatry, given into sin. Paul is so easily in context, giving him, you know, bringing the gospel and saying, this is what the God that you have been searching for through Jesus Christ. We have repentance uh, and forgiveness of sins. We find salvation. And he goes on to preach that great message on Mars Hill. Now, important. Not everyone fell on their knees and said, oh, yeah, Jesus, no. Some of them mocked at him. They also planned to, uh, you know, uh, beat him up. But some people believed. And some people said, OK, this is some new theology or a new uh, thing that we are hearing. Why don't you come tomorrow or come another time and come to this place and you share in detail what you're talking about? So here's the thing now. Paul just started off the minute, you know, just giving a simple message. Some people believed. Some people did not believe. Some people wanted to hear more. And so this opened a door where all the leaders, the religious leaders, the political leaders, the government leaders, the rich of Athens, the intellectuals of Athens, they all came to the Agora and Paul uh, goes on to stand there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, see it later on that the leaders, the political leaders, uh, it, it's mentioned there in the book of Acts as well, the council leaders, some of them accepted Jesus as their personal savior, right? So Paul established a local church in that place, right? And then through this local church, it went on to spread to other parts like Corinth and metropolis and uh, uh, to other parts of uh, 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 Greece. So Paul later sends Timothy to Thessalonica from Athens to encourage the believers there. And from Athens, they traveled up to Corinth. So we see here, Paul was not afraid to bring the gospel. It didn't matter to him the background of the people. It didn't matter to them him about what they've been believing in. Nothing hindered him from ministering the gospel. And that is why he was able to do such a powerful ministry. Wherever he went, there was an outpouring of God. Right? Later on, we see that the church in Corinth is the church which is oh, spirit-filled. Of course, they had practical problems and all of it, but it records that the church in Corinth was the most, uh, you know, uh, the church with flowing with all the gifts of the Spirit. So there were prophecies, there were word of knowledge, there were healings. Imagine in this whole place called Athens, in this place where filled with idolatry, picture a local church in between with signs, miracles, wonders, prophecies, power of the Holy Spirit just spreading into people's lives, touching many communities. Paul was able to do that. Uh, what an amazing work. He goes on from Athens to Corinth, which is very close by, 55 miles away. He just goes there. Now, at Corinth uh, is, again, part of Greece. So uh, uh, let's look at what Corinth is all about. right? Uh, it's, Corinth is known as the ornament of Greece because this is from it was from Corinth that most of the business to the government was coming from. So uh, it had two harbors, a booming commercial center, and 
uh, on top of this whole place was this uh, temple of Aphrodite uh, called the Goddess of Love, uh, and uh, which had thousand male prostitutes, thousand female prostitutes, uh, and again, uh, sexual immorality, idolatry, prostitution. Corinth's reputation was immorality and pleasure. That was their reputation, right? Paul stayed in Corinth the most. 18 months he stayed there. Never has he stayed in a place. So if we look from the first missionary journey, it is always, okay, on the move. Raise up a church, raise up leaders, move on. But in Corinth, he stayed for 18 months. Uh, so one important thing that we can learn is, you know, we need to ask God for wisdom on how and where to minister, right? Uh, probably Paul thought, okay, this place is a hellhole, so let me stay here. Let's raise up a strong church. We need more time in this place compared to the people in Galatia. They just believed uh, and, you know, everything went on smooth. Even uh, Thessalonica, Philippi, they were, they were all okay, you know, but Corinth, I need to stay on here. Uh, uh, Paul stayed at Corinth. Aquila and Priscilla were uh, Jewish believers uh, who had come to Corinth from Rome. So uh, during that time, the Roman Emperor Claudius said, okay, those who are Jews, you need to get out of Rome. So Aquila and Priscilla come into uh, Corinth and then Paul, Aquila, Priscilla, a couple, they were tent making and they also did the ministry together. Uh, Paul re received a lot of support from the Philippian church. That's why Paul writes to the Philippians. He says, your gifts have been a sweet smelling aroma uh, in the presence of God. So uh, not only was Paul working, but he also received gifts. Uh, now, those gifts could be in terms of clothes or money. Uh, it could be anything, but things that could help him continue on with the ministry. Uh, and Silas and Timothy again arrived from Macedonia. They come into Corinth and they join with Paul. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla are also are there and Luke also joins at Corinth. So now the team is again come together. Aquila, Priscilla, a new couple. Uh, Paul, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Timothy arrives and Luke arrives. So they've got about uh, five people now in the team and they begin to uh, minister and proclaim the gospel in the synagogues to the Jews, uh, to the Gentiles, and they preach the gospel outside of the uh, you know uh, uh, marketplaces outside of the synagogues as well. Uh, many high-ranking officials were brought to the Lord. While at Corinth, Paul writes a letter, two letters, First and Second Thessalonians. Uh, he writes it from Corinth when he was 18 months at uh, Corinth. Now, why does he write that letter? So if you look at Thessalonians, the church has already started. It's growing. Uh, but most of what is written in his letter was about the second coming. So what happened was people came into the church and they caused confusion, said uh, the second coming is already over or the rapture is already over. Uh, and so Paul writes to them, do not be alarmed. Right? Uh, we know, you know, uh, even before the second coming, before the rapture, there are certain things that should happen. Uh, the Antichrist shall be revealed. So he, he looks at it as priority to write this letter to them. Right? Important thing. Uh, even as we grow up as leaders, as we get responsibilities, probably in the church, one aspect in leadership that we should remember is when we see a problem never take it you know uh, it's like taking dust and putting it under a carpet right and say okay l forget it let me see think about it later no paul didn't do that the moment he received the message uh, uh probably timothy brought that message saying that you know uh, this is what's happening uh, the moment he received it, Paul didn't say, okay, no, no, don't trouble me about all of that. Let's Now I'm in Corinth, so let's do a work in Corinth. Uh, no, he didn't do that. He said, okay, I need to address this issue. The church is in uh, you know, trouble. They're confused. So he writes, he says, don't be worried. 
the the antichrist the second coming uh these are the things that should happen the enemy will come he will do this uh but you know in the twinkling of an eye we will be changed and all of that and paul encourages the churches right uh so it's not only that paul started the churches and he forgot about them okay done i've done my part no he was constantly uh teaching them constantly uh empowering them helping them to grow uh you know it was as if um you know it was his children and he wanted to see them in in the best of health and paul writes in his last letter uh or i think it was first timothy he writes he says i bow my knee to the father and i pray for you all every single day uh, so powerful it was not like you know uh, uh you know paul started the church and he said okay i'm done with you all let me look at the new uh, things that i can do no part of revival and an outpouring of god is also to nurture what god has given us right as we raise up leaders as we raise up churches we are to nurture it look after it in the right way um and that's when we will see god working more uh, greater works in and through us all right uh, so we have uh, completed our time uh can i request one of us to please close in prayer and then tomorrow uh we will pick up from here from corinth itself we will pick up and try to finish our second and third missionary journey so uh right could one of us close in prayer please dear heavenly father we thank you for such an insightful lesson into the history of the church and the work that paul has done in the respective cities we thank you lord that you're still god and you reign today in our lives we pray that this knowledge we will also impart in others father that we have learned not to sit and stand for you today as we see that some of these patterns are repeating itself for you be glorified lord in everything we do and say in jesus name amen 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 thank you taisha thank you everyone for joining we will uh, meet tomorrow god bless